Hello, baseball fans and fans of Out of the Park Baseball and, yes, fans of Mismatch Monday. Today we are going to do Mismatch Monday using Out of the Park Baseball 25 because, as you will see, they have a, a nice feature here which I did not realize that they had. Um, and I don't know if any of the previous versions had this. But you can do an historical exhibition game, which means you can just pull two teams from history and play them against each other in out-of-the-park baseball. And so that is what we're going to do today. Now, um, the first team, let's see, please select number of teams, two. Uh, please select teams. And, and, um, hmm. Two teams, all right. Um, we're going to do uh, the away. The away team will be the better team, as it usually is when I do these. So we will go with the 1980s, and we are going to um, take the Phillies from the 1980s because they were a good team. They were 91 and 71, as you can see right there. So we're going to take them. The home team, we are going to do the, um, let's see, we're going to do now the 19, you remember the 1962 Mets were the worst, were one of the worst teams in the history of baseball. We're not going to do the 1962 Mets, but we are going to do the 1963 Mets. So we will get the 1963 Mets in there. You can see they were 51 and 111. And so uh, the series length, we're only going to have one game. Um, and uh, we're going to have, yes, the DH is off. And um, let's see. Nineteen sixty. We'll use the 1963 settings. Rosters will be opening day rosters. Um, injuries will be enabled. And so we are going to create the exhibition. Okay, um, I'm I'm pretty much I'm just gonna go with the rosters and the lineups or whatever that they have. Um, so let's go to lineups, and you can see right here the um, the lineup for the. So I guess we're gonna the Phillies are going to pitch Steve Carlton, and uh, the lineup will be lot for the Phillies will be Lonnie Smith in left field, Pete Rose at first base, Keith Moreland at catcher, Mike Schmidt at third base, Bake McBride in right, Manny Trio at second. Larry Boa batting seventh and being the shortstop, and Gary Maddox will be in center field and bat eighth, and then the ninth hitter I would expect will be Steve Carlton. So we will, uh, we're going to play ball. And uh, let's see. And I think this means that I'm going to play the Phillies, which is what I want to do, because I'm not that stupid. I'm not going to take the uh, 63 bets. Um, or wait, no, this would say this is saying play the game. So I don't know if I'm going to control the Phillies or not, but um, we will go out to the game. Um, and I'm going to do, this is going to be a 1963 game, an older game. So let's do the, uh, the 
The ballpark will be the polo grounds too, which is kind of cool. Um, we are going to, let's see. Um, I know that there's a, There is a TV. There's a TV filter thing here that I can use to, um, like, do like a 1963 look to the uh, to the field. Let me black and white, and so it'll give it that that old time look. And now we're going to start the game. And I am going to, well, it looks like I am actually controlling the Mets. So we're going to pitch to the batter. I guess it automatically gives me the home team. But anyway. Going to take a look around the polo grounds here. And then uh, get in and do the first pitch. And that is one down for the Phillies. And the next batter is Pete Rose. Pitching is Al Jackson, by the way, for the 1963 Mets. Oh, I guess I'm controlling both teams. That's what's going on. I'm controlling both teams. That's fine. I'll do that. And there's an error. Pete Rose is going to reach on an error. Now, I didn't... I don't know where it would have said that I could have had the computer control one team and me control the other, but we will, I mean, uh, you know, we do that when I'm playing card and dice at the table. I control both teams anyway. So Keith Moreland is the batter, and we will swing away with a runner at second and one out. And Keith Moreland, it looks like, is going to be out. He flies out to center field. And that brings up Mike Schmidt, Michael Jack Schmidt. And we will swing away. And he is going to walk. So Mike Schmidt goes down to first base. And that brings up Bake McBride. And I got to keep forgetting that I have to hit both of them. So there's a walk and it loads the bases. The Phillies have the bases loaded with two down. And Manny Trio is the batter. And that could be a walk, and he walks in a run. Al Jackson walks in a run, and the Phillies have a one nothing lead, which might just be all they need here. But Larry Boa is the batter, the shortstop. And he is going to get a, a base hit, and it's going to be an error on the outfielder. So this is, yes, truly... This is truly the 1963 Mets. So now three runs have scored for the Phillies. They have a runner at second and third, and Gary Maddox is the batter. And that is going to be a foul ball, foul out to the first baseman, and that is the inning. But the Phillies came away with three runs. And... We have Tim Harkness, the first baseman for the Mets, is the first batter. You can see Steve Carlton. He pitched 304 innings in 1980. And that's going to be a ground out to Boa. Boa will throw the runner out. There's one down. And the next batter for the Mets is Jim Hickman, the center fielder. I believe he was on the 62 Mets as well. And Carlton will deliver. And that is going to be a ground... No, it gets through the infield. So it's going to be a, um, a single. Single for Hickman. And uh, Ron Hunt, the second baseman, is up next. Carlton will deal to him. And that is going to be a base hit. Wow. All right, so the Mets got something going against lefty here. And that will bring to the plate Frank Thomas. Not the big hurt Frank Thomas, but the 1960s Frank Thomas. And that is a nice little poke right there, but it's going to be an out. 
So there's two down and Duke Snyder. The right fielders. I did not know that the 1963 Mets had Duke Snyder. But that's going to be an out. So he flies out to left. And the 63 Mets come away with no runs. And Al Jackson goes back out there to face Carlton. Now I can go through the, I can burn through the bullpen if I want. Because it's only one game. We're not doing a series. Although that would be an interesting idea. There is a base hit. Again, yet again, Al Jackson. You can see Al Jackson in 1963 was uh, 13 and 17 in 227 innings pitch with a 396 earned run average. But the Phillies are working him over here. And Lonnie Smith back to the top of the order. And that's going to be a base hit. So they are just they're taking it to the Mets here. There's runners at first and second, and uh, and no outs, and Pete Rose the batter, and Pete Rose is going to walk. So the bases are loaded again for the Phillies. They loaded the bases in the uh, first, and they've loaded the bases here in the second, and that's going to be a ground out. Just going to be a force at second, though. It's not going to be a double play, so there's only one out. Run comes in, and so the Phillies have another run, and Michael Jack Schmidt up. You don't, you don't want to see that if you are the Mets. And that looks like it's a base hit, and it is, and that's going to score at least another run. And two, it actually scores... Um, no, it, it scores another run, so uh, they already had a run before that. So it is 5 nothing Phillies here with Bake McBride up. This would have been an interesting game to do on the cards and see if the Phillies really would would uh, would be schooling the Mets this badly. But that's going to be a pop-out to third base. So there's two down, and Manny Trio, the second baseman, is the batter. And he's going to ground out to third, it looks like, and it, that's exactly what happens. But the Phillies get two more runs in the second, and they have a 5 nothing lead going to the bottom of the second. Carlton will be dealing to Chris Canizaro, the catcher, for the Mets. That looks like a base hit. It is. So the Mets get a hit. They are hitting Carlton. They, uh, they're hitting Carlton surprisingly well, but... Um, Charlie Neal is up, but they did not score. They haven't scored any runs, and they're down five here in the second. That's going to be an, a strikeout. So there's one down, and Al Moran, the shortstop, is up. And he is probably going to... No, it's a base hit. That is a base hit. I thought that would be a flyout, but... Uh, we got Al Jackson, the pitcher. Let's see if the uh, pitcher can help his own cause here. There's one out already, so I'm not going to sacrifice. And they're down by five. Al Jackson can't do anything. He strikes out, and that brings us to the top of the lineup, and Tim Harkness, the first baseman for the Mets. This is a pretty cool feature. I like this. I can, I'll can i do more of this maybe on the channel. But... We have a 5 nothing lead for the Phillies as they bat in the third with Larry Boa, the shortstop, up against Al Jackson. And that's going to be a ground out to shortstop. Maybe this could be the first zero inning for the Phillies. They have Maddox, Gary Maddox. The old saying goes that uh, two-thirds of the world is covered by water and the other third is covered by Gary Maddox. And he flies out. So there's two down and Steve Carlton, the final batter in the uh, nine-man lineup for the Phillies, and he strikes out. So Al Jackson does get a zero inning under his belt, but he's still down by five, and Jim Hickman will be batting for the Phillies again, or for the Mets against... Carlton. And that's going to be a ground out, so there's one down. And that brings up Ron Hunt, the second baseman. Ron Hunt, of course, one of the guys very famous for being hit by pitches 
probably the most in the history of baseball. Off the top of my head, I want to say that, but correct me in the uh, comments if that's not the case. Frank Thomas is the batter with two down here and nobody on for the Mets. And it looks like he is going to be out. So uh, that was a line out to the second baseman, and we're going to the top of the fourth with a 5 nothing lead for the Phillies, and the Phillies batting with Lonnie Smith against Al Jackson. And that is going to be, it looks like a fly out, and it is. Which brings up Pete Rose. Pete Rose, the all-time hits leader, not in the Hall of Fame, although in my opinion he should be. Um, that is going to be a base hit. So Rose is aboard with one down and Keith Moreland, the batter. And he's going to strike out. Mike Schmidt is up. Michael Jack Schmidt, two down, and Rose at first, and he strikes out, and Al Jackson has another zero inning. Now, if he could only have started the game like that and kept going with it, um, that would have been nice, but uh, didn't happen. The Phillies got five runs in the first two innings. Duke Snyder is up against Carlton. And that's going to be a ground out, it looks like, to uh, Larry Boa, who throws out Snyder, and one down with Chris Cannizzaro, the catcher up. And that looks like it's going to be a ground out. There's two down, and Steve Carlton is the batter. Or Char no, Charlie Neal is the batter against Steve Carlton. And that is going to be a ground out to third. So uh, the Mets go one, two, three. In the fourth, we go to the top of the fifth with the Mets leading five nothing. Canis or uh, Jacks L. Jackson has settled down a little here um, late of late, but he allowed five runs to the Phillies in the first two innings, and finds himself down five nothing here with Manny Trio the batter and one down and nobody on. And that is going to be a fly out. Yes. Fly out to center field. Gary Maddox, um, or n n um, the center fielder for the Mets, actually, makes the play. And Larry Boa is the batter with two down and nobody on. And that is going to be a single. Larry Boa gets on with a single, which brings to the plate. Now that brings to the plate Gary Maddox. And it looks like he might have a base hit there. Is that a base? It is a base hit. And does, no, Boa will not go to third. There's runners at first and second with two down here. And now Steve Carlton is the batter. They're going to let him hit. Let's see what happens here. It looks like he's out. And that is going to be it. So Jackson does get out of that inning. We go to the bottom of the fifth. It's 5 nothing. The Mets are, the 1963 Mets are losing to the 1980 Phillies. And uh, uh, Moran is the shortstop against Carlton. And he strikes out. There's one down, and Al Jackson, the pitcher, is up. Now, this would be a good time to maybe get somebody warming up in the uh, bullpen for the Mets. So I'm going to do that. We're going to we're going to warm somebody up. We're going to get Jay Hook up in the in the uh, in the uh, Mets bullpen, and we're going to pinch hit for Jackson with. Um, let's see. I'm going to go Gil Hodges. So we're going to pinch hit for Jackson with Gil Hodges. And we'll return to the game, and now we've got Gil Hodges batting against Carlton. The Mets trying to get something going here, and that'll close the book on Jackson, who went five innings, or um, yeah, five innings and allowed five runs to the Phillies. And Tim Harkness is up with two down, so that was a waste. And 
And that's going to be an out. So, yeah, we have incomplete defensive positions. We're going to put Jay Hook in at pitcher. And uh, Jay Hook uh, automatically then becomes the pitcher, and we will return to the game. So now we got Jay Hook. Jay Hook in uh, 1963 was 4 and 14 and 152 and two thirds innings with a 5.48 earned run average. He will deal to Lonnie Smith, who is going to be leading off, and he is the leadoff hitter for the Phillies, who lead five nothing here in the top of the sixth. And uh, Lonnie Smith really gets into that, but a great play by the right fielder has him out. So there's one down, and Pete Rose, the batter. And Pete Rose is going to pop out to the second baseman, and there's two down. So Jay Hook coming in and uh, shutting the Phillies down. Um, five nothing here. It looked like it was going to be real ugly. I mean, five nothing is bad, but when you're considering a uh, a team that only won 50 games against a team that won 91 games. Uh, this is not as bad as it could be, for sure. Um, Jim Hickman will be batting against Lefty. They're going to keep Lefty out there, at least for this inning. I know it's a kind of an exhibition game, and we could go through the bullpen if we wanted to, but we're not going to do that. Um, Ron Hunt, the second baseman, is up with one down here in the sixth and he strikes out and uh, that'll bring up Frank Thomas um, Carlton has seven strikeouts now through five and two-thirds innings and Frank Thomas looks like he's going to ground out to the shortstop so the Mets come away again yet again with nothing and Jay Hook is back out there on the mound for the Mets going to deal to Michael Jack Schmidt here And he strikes out. There's one down, and Bake McBride is up. Loved Bake McBride, by the way. He was a, he was a favorite. And that is going to be a deep ball that goes over the center fielder's head and right to that little, you know, that nook out there in center field in the polo grounds. And Manny Trio is the batter. And that is going to be a ground out. The first baseman fields the ball and throws over to the pitcher covering. And uh, there is two down with a man now at third. And Larry Boa is the batter. The Phillies still have a 5 nothing lead. Larry Boa trying to make it 6, but he doesn't. He grounds out to the first baseman. And that will be that for the Phillies. Um, and we go to the bottom of the seventh. The Mets, it's getting late for the Mets. Duke Snyder is up against Carlton. May take Carlton out after the seventh. We'll see. Um, Duke Snyder, was that a home? That's a home run by Duke Snyder. So the Mets get on the board. Duke Snyder taking lefty deep. And it is five to one with Chris Cannizzaro, the catcher. And Chris Cannizzaro is going to ground out to third base. There is one down for the Mets. Charlie Neal, the third baseman, is up. And what's Charlie Neal got in store? It looks like maybe an out. So that was a fly out to the out to the center field. And Al Moran is up against Carlton. Carlton's bar is kind of, you know coming down. It looks like he's losing a little bit of gas. That was a nice hit. There's, that's going to be at least a double, maybe a triple. Do we have a triple? Do we hear a triple? We do. So the Mets, Moran gets a triple. And yeah, you can see uh, Lefty's probably winding down here. Jay Hook, the batter. I am going to get somebody up, and it might be a little late to get somebody up. But we're going to do it anyway. Um, I'm going to get McKenzie up in the bullpen. Because the Mets need a run right here. And uh, we're going to put Joe Christopher up at the plate. Batting for Jay Hook. 
return to the game and let uh, Christopher hit. But he strikes out. And so I don't know if the pitcher had enough time to warm up. If he didn't, too bad. No, he's ready. McKenzie is ready. So we'll put McKenzie in. That's nice. Um, and he is inserted in the ninth spot in the lineup. And um, and we're going to return to the game, but then we're going to go to the Phillies. Oh, yeah, we, we, don't, we didn't have anybody warming up. So we're going to... We're going to warm up somebody, I guess, when the uh, Phillies bat. So, well, no, you know what? I'm going to... Yeah, the Phillies are batting anyway. So we're going we're gonna to warm up Bob Walk. And Gary Maddox is up at the plate. So Gary Maddox batting against uh, Ken McKenzie, who... Only needed one batter to warm up, probably because there was an inning change, too. And that's going to be a base hit. Maddox is on. Did he get a double? He's going to get a double, it looks like. Yeah. So Maddox gets a double. This is the perfect time to pinch hit for Steve Carlton. We will do that with Greg Luzinski, the bull, just because I love the bull. I'm not even going to try to consider whether it's a lefty-righty matchup or what it is. We're just going to let the bull bat because I like Greg Luzinski. He was on the White Sox, so. And that's a strikeout. He strikes out Luzinski. There's one down and Lonnie Smith, the leadoff batter for the Phillies. And he's going to ground out to short, it looks like. So Maddox now still at second, but now with two outs and Pete Rose, the batter. And that's going to be a walk. So now the Phillies have two aboard and Keith Moreland is the batter. It looks like Keith Moreland may have flown out to center, and he did. So... The Phillies, despite a leadoff double by Maddox, did not score. And now we will put Bob Walk in the game for the Phillies to pitch. And he is also inserted in that ninth spot in the order. And uh, he is going to deal to Tim Harkness. The Mets losing 5-1 here. Which is not bad for, as I said, it's not bad for a 50-win team taking on a 91-win team. That's going to be a strikeout, though. One down and Jim Hickman, the batter. And he is going to ground out to the pitcher. So Bob Walk throws him out at first. And Ron Hunt is the batter. He hasn't been hit by a pitch yet. And right there, it's going to be a pop, pop out to the catcher. So the Mets go pretty quickly right there. And Mike Schmidt is the batter against Ken McKenzie. And let's see what Mike Schmidt comes up with. That's going to be a fly out to center field. One down and Bake McBride is the batter for the Phillies here in the top of the ninth with the Phillies ahead. The 1980 Phillies ahead of the 1963 New York Mets by the score of 5-1 to one, and there's two down with Manny Trio up at the plate for the Phillies and he's going to ground out to first so now it's all up to the Mets to try to get four runs here. They're down by four. Bob Walk is still out there and Frank Thomas is the batter. This looks like it might be the heart of the Mets lineup so that could be good for the Mets. Although they need four runs, and Thomas leads off with a pop-out to second base. Manny Trio making the play. And Duke Snyder, who has a home run this game and has accounted for the Mets' only run. And uh, what did he do there? Did he hit another home run? No, he's going to fly out to center, actually. So there is two down, and Chris Canazaro is the catcher. And he's going to hit a ball right down the right field line for a base hit. So he's aboard. And uh, Charlie Neal, the third baseman, is up. 
And he's going to ground out to short. Looks like that will do it for the game, and that is. So we will take a look at the... Uh, well, they win the World Series. They said they win the World Series. I, I don't really think this would have been any kind of a World Series in anybody's book. But um, it was one game. The Phillies won it five to one. Here is the box score for the the hitters. If you want to take a quick look at that, um, and then we will take a look at the pitching. Uh, Carlton with the win. He went seven. He allowed six hits and one earned run. Didn't walk anybody. And then Bob Walk came on for two and gave up no runs. Al Jackson pitched five. He gave up two earned runs, five runs total, uh, on seven hits and four walks. Only struck out three. Hook went two and allowed one hit and no runs. And McKenzie went two and allowed one hit and no runs. And that will be it for me. Sportsmanzy, Bob Zolke, signing.